So today what we're going to do is I'm going to break down a bunch of different bass lines from Hotsense 82's tracks. The project file for this tutorial is going to be available for you to download with all the sounds and everything included. And here's a quick preview of what we're going to make. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. What I've done is made a selection of some of his different tracks that have different styles of bass line. And we're gonna go through and break those down and see what makes them tick and try and recreate them. So I've started a Patreon page and the project files for every video are gonna be available for download on there. I'll be doing some other cool exclusive Patreon stuff like Q and A's and live streams, some track feedbacks. They're gonna be regular. The goal is to do one live stream a month. There will also be a Patreon exclusive discount for people ordering track feedbacks, mixing and mastering, as well as a bunch of other stuff. So if you support what I'm doing on the channel and you want to help support me as a creator, there's a link in the description, so check it out. Now let's jump into Ableton and get this thing going, yeah? All right guys, here we are inside Ableton, and what I've done is create a bit of a kind of Hot Sense 82 style beat. It's not kind of, it's not copied exactly off any particular track, but it's kind of close enough. It's in the ballpark of his kind of style. Ah, I think it sounds kind of cool. So let's just take a quick listen and then I'll walk you through the beat. All right, so the kick sampled from his track Makeup. It was easier than scrolling through hundreds of kicks to find the exact right kind of one. And of course this kind of works. <laughs> and then I've got a top kick on top of that to just give it a bit more punch. Together. Then claps. So Hot Sense 82 is really known for these kind of syncopated double clap riffs. Right, so that's you know that's something that would be exactly in one of his tracks. I think it's like a 909 clap or a 707 clap. Then I've got another clap layer which is panned a little bit to the left. And you can see it's pre-shifted a little bit to just kind of create a bit of groove with the first clap. And then I've got a snare which is panned a little bit to the right. So that's just kind of to create a bit more contrast and make the clap sound a bit more interesting. So all together. And with the kick. Then we've got hats. So this 16th hat. So this is something that he uses in pretty much all of his tracks. And then I've got just a couple of additional groove hits. So I've got a kind of brighter closed hat and then a tambourine. And this is something else that he uses in a lot of tracks which is like a shaker doing playing on the offbeat, but doing like a little second hit after. So it's, if you can imagine it, um, someone playing a shaker, it's like shh, 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 shh. I'm not sure if you can hear my squeaky chair, but thumbs up the video for my squeaky chair. <laughs> so it kind of gives it a, little bit, a bit more groove than if it was just a straight um, offbeat, so like this. So it just gives it a lot more vibe. But then of course, in pretty much every track that Hot Sense 82 does, he's got quite a big, long, open hat. All of those hats together. Ah, one thing, I've got a, just kind of like a background top loop here. The top loop's just, just there to give a bit more kind of detail and texture to the drums. 
and that's just coming from my sample pack link up here <laughs> if you want to support grab a copy so you can see the the main drums are mixed in front and the top loops really kind of in the background just giving a bit more exactly like i said a bit more texture then we've got cushion which is So I've got this tom groove here. Now one thing about the drums is they're not really tuned. Normally I would always tune my drums, but the tracks that we're kind of referencing and remaking are all in different keys. So there was kind of like no point to try and tune them to one specific key because they wouldn't work with the bass line anyway. But if you tune your drums, they're always going to sound a bit more harmonious and a bit more like they kind of are meant to be together. Uh, then I've got a percussion loop from my sample pack again and I've just used only these hits and I've got another hit I've just sampled one of these hits and added another one to kind of create a bit more groove playing in that position and it's taking that and if you look at the MIDI here it's playing it at C4 which means it's pitched up an octave so it kind of creates a little bit of contrast Cool, and then I've just got this rim which is playing just a little kind of riff at the start of each bar. So that's the drums. So the drums do sound kind of basic or maybe not quite as hooky as Hudson Sadie 2's tracks, but if you listen to his tracks you'll notice there's very seldom uh, just drums. There's, there's generally like some kind of vocal element or some kind of, even if it's just like low in the mix, just like a kind of vocal chop or some kind of low synth element or some stabs or something else going on which makes it all a lot more interesting. His beats aren't actually that crazy or that intricate but because, like I said, we're using a bunch of different bass lines and a bunch of different keys, so there was no point in me going through and kind of adding melodic elements because they were going to clash with the bass lines anyway. So the first track we're going to look at is Heater, which came out on Circus Recording a few months back, just in time for the summer season, which kind of everyone seemed to open up, all the countries seemed to open up and festivals were going on. I know this was like a big track for a lot of DJs, self included. It's a bit more of a kind of tribal vibe than most of his other tracks, Really cool, really cool on the floor. A lot of energy and quite fun. So let's just take a quick listen. Cool, cool, cool. So this is my version. All right, so let's take a look at the MIDI here. Now we're in the key of D. Uh, so it's just basically like ascending up the scale and then there's a little dip and a little fill at the end. So it kind of gives it this rising and rolling kind of feel. And then just you'll notice at the end of the um, of each bar, there's just this kind of little fill note. And those are slightly different from the first bar to the second bar. And that just helps to kind of make it feel not as repetitive because this, is, this sound is literally going through the whole track. So let's have a listen to that in isolation. You notice how that um, at the end there, it was just this. sounds a lot more loopy and repetitive. Having that slight differentiation at the end of each bar really helps to kind of keep it sounding fresh. Okay, so let's have a look at the synth. Now for all the synths I've used uh, Wavetable from Ableton. Now I need to say I'm not a sound design expert by any means. Um, I've done my best. I can kind of make sounds in the ballpark of other sounds but just it's not really my speciality to copy things exactly. Um, it's not how I work and it's not what I dedicate my time to but I do really see the value in being able to kind of do this to understand what's happening and to kind of get an idea of how it's been done. Of course all the presets for these sounds are available in the project file which is on Patreon so go grab that if you're interested.
Now let's have a look at the synth. So we've got two oscillators. First one, just we're just using basic shapes here, and we've got a saw wave and another saw wave. So the first saw wave is tuned down 12 semitones, and then the second one is tuned down five semitones, which means it's playing a fifth of the first octave. So let me show you what that means in the MIDI, right? So the key of the track is D. So it means that when the D note is being played, it's also playing an A with the second oscillator. And then when the F note is being played, also playing a C with the second oscillator. So if we turn off the second oscillator, bit boring, bit mundane, the second oscillator on, got a lot more personality a lot it's a lot more gritty so it's kind of it's playing a chord essentially and what's happening is those saw waves because they are playing at different frequencies they're slightly out of phase so that's why it kind of sounds like it's constantly changing because it essentially is so then i've got then i've got a filter so without the filter 24 db filter And then it's just got a little bit of resonance to help it kind of give a little bit of bite, a bit of drive. That just helps it sound a bit more gritty and a bit more in your face. Now the filter modulation. So envelope two is modulating the filter and that's just opening up the filter a little bit at the start to give it a bit more of a plucky sound and emphasize the start of each note. And then it come, the filter comes down or and then the filter closes as the note is sustained, but doesn't close all the way because otherwise we wouldn't be able to hear it and then you wouldn't get that sustained effect. So really cool sound there. And of course, like great options to modulate the filter frequency throughout the track to create buildups and create tension. So the second track that we're going to look at is Buggin. Uh, this was it's a couple of years old, I think. Really awesome take on Gold Tricks um, featuring Andrea Brown Trippin, uh, which has been like reimagined uh, for the modern day and has an amazing vocal from Jim Cook. But, uh, So you hear in there what I'm talking about with the kind of atmosphere on the beat. There's this vocal kind of pad thing which is changing all the time. So we don't quite get that effect when we're just doing the bass in a beat. And that's adding a lot of personality to the track. That said, let's have a look. Now this one, I think I might not have got the um, synthesis exactly right. We are playing at E and we're using a combination of different note lengths, which is helping to create groove and interest in the pattern. Now we've got this little note here, which is actually playing out of the scale, which kind of helps. It's, it's something that's done in modern tech house quite regularly. It only works with like a really subby bass line. Um, you'll notice in the original bass is probably a bit more subby than what I've got here and I kind of have opened up the frequency to emphasize the sound a bit more. Um, but this creates like a kind of dissonant feeling and makes you kind of, it, gi it gives it kind of an edgy vibe. Um, Yeah, cool, cool. Um, and then as with the previous example, there's just some kind of different um, different endings to the different bars to c give like a bit of variation, help like a repetitive pattern sound like it's not so repetitive essentially. Um, again, I've got a little bit of reverb on here. 
very subtle and a little bit of distortion which is also spread wide now let's have a look at the sound so for this one again i've gone for oh, this one i've got a square wave on the bottom to give it a bit more of a rough kind of sound and then i've got the the fifth being played Right, fucking hell. <clears throat> so this sound I've got is similar to the heater one in terms of how I've made it. Um, the oscillators are the same. Uh, it's the envelopes that are different because the, the, the sound is a bit more plucky, a bit more staccato. So I've got the sustain pulled down more on the envelope. Um, there's a bit more envelope so it's being emphasized a bit more to create that plucky vibe um, I've pulled the release time right back on both the amp envelope and the envelope 2 which is modulating the filter cutoff here I've got a bit more drive a bit of resonance to help it cut through and that's about that it's um, to be honest I did this before and and it doesn't sound quite right I think it's probably some kind of FM sound but the envelope style and the notes and everything are what's being played in Buggin let's have another listen so I mean you notice in the track it's really the bass is not the main feature of this track it's got these those big chords, um, that big chord riff that's playing throughout the whole track, and then the vocal, obviously. So, but because of the kind of pace, there's quite a lot, of, quite a few notes. It really helps to give it that energy and push the track forward. So, moving on, the next track that we are looking at is Vapors. I think this is featuring Alex Mills. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Really cool track, a bit more kind of epic, a bit more heading towards the melodic house, melodic techno kind of vibe. Really cool, classic sounding bass line, kind of like a throwback progressive kind of style. Again, you can hear with the beat, there's those big vocal delays going on. That's a really classic Hotson City 2 trope in pretty much every track, you know, like they, like I was saying. There's very few tracks of his where you get like really just a beat section. Even like right from the start, there's generally some kind of synth element or vocal element going. But um, anyway, what we're what we are focusing on is the bass line and it's that long sustained uh, reese bass. A real classic sound um, using detuned saw waves. Okay, so let's have a listen to Dilby Vapors. <laughs> So I had the frequency, the filter frequency turned up a bit there uh, just to give a bit more of an indication of the notes that are being played. Like I said, without those vocals and stuff, it sounds a bit empty. So what's happening here? This time we're just using one oscillator. So this time we're using a sawtooth and that's creating the harmonics as opposed to the other ones, which we're using the triangle wave, which is a bit closer to a sine wave. So it doesn't have quite as many harmonics. So looking at this in wavetable, you start at the top here with a square wave, which has got the most harmonics, and you finish down here with a sine wave, which has got the least harmonics, right? So we are doing a saw wave, sawtooth wave, which has got a decent amount of harmonics. So if I open up this filter cutoff, and that's got that wide sound, right? So that's being created by the unison here. If I turn this off, a 
it's nowhere near as interesting. So that's got three voices. And so essentially what happens is that oscillator is being duplicated three times and then there's one in the center, one on the right and one on the left. And this amount is how spread wide they are and how kind of slightly out of phase they are. Right, really cool sound this one. So we've got a little bit of um, envelope 2 applied to the filter frequency which is just giving it a slight pluck emphasizing the start of each note a little bit and then that kind of pulls it down to the sustain which you, you can see really well on the wavetable here in the filter section. Now let's take a look at the MIDI for this. So really simple, uh, we're playing in the key of E. So it plays E for two bars, jumps up to the B, and then comes down to the A. So if we look at this in terms of the scale, it's playing E minor. So that's the E minor scale there. So again, we've got the fifth, and the fourth. So it sounds really, really stable um, and just works really, really well. It's not a risky chord progression by any means. So these bass notes are kind of implying a chord progression. They are... So it's playing E minor, then B minor, and then A minor. But of course, these aren't in there. But together with the, re with the other melodic elements in the track, like in here, we've got an up. So that helps your ear to subconsciously kind of imply those other chords. And we understand that our brains kind of make up that that chord even though we're only hearing the bass notes so quite interesting again let's have another listen and so this is a really ca classic bass sound called a re-space which is used a lot in um, drum and bass, old rave kind of tunes, that type of thing, and progressive house. Okay, so now we're going to look at makeup. This has got a lot more detail in the bass lines than some of the other ones, which is why I've left it till last. It's made up of two parts, actually. Oh, so the track came out last year, I believe. Um, it was a big track. I think it was like in the top five or something on Beatport. So, Let's have a listen. So you can hear there's also some other synths in there that are interplaying with the bass line, some kind of like mid bass type sounds. So I haven't gone as far as creating them, but you'll hear when, in my version that oh, the bass is right. So for this one, it's made up of two parts. We've got an FM sound, which is two oscillators. And we've got a very plucky envelope here, which is just letting through the punch of the sound. The rest is quite subby. It's a really aggressive kind of sound. We've got quite a lot of drive and quite a lot of resonance, which is really important for that higher note. So let's take a look at the MIDI so you can understand what I mean by that higher note, okay? So it's quite a simple pattern. Um, because the, the bass itself, the sound, has got so much character. It can be quite a simple pattern and it's kind of like, I would say it's like a simple 
bold pattern. So it's a really simplistic pattern, but the sound is like, it's a, it's a wide bass. It's, kind of, it's really aggressive and punchy. It's got some delay on it. So it kind of like really fills up the track. So it doesn't need to be more like say, compared to something like Bloodlines, which is got, has got very fast staccato notes. This has got much more sustained, more aggressive uh, harmonics coming through with the filter being more open. Now these notes here are what's really giving it this character. So you can see this is playing on D and this is playing D, but it's up two octaves. So that's what creates that kind of big, bright sound. Now let's go back and have a look at the, the synth here. There's quite a lot of um, modulation going on here. So I've said if the note is higher, then the filter envelope should be more open. If the if the note is higher, then the amplitude or the volume should be should be louder, because we really want to emphasise that big bright note at the top. That's creating so much character and so much energy in the track. Then I've got some unison ag again, which is helping to spread it out and make it wider. Outside of the wavetable, I've got the overdrive, which is really pushing the harmonics and giving it that kind of rough gritty sound. So that really adds a lot of character. So it's cool without it. Um, I would say if you're going to do something like this in your track, just feel it out and see what works for your track. And then I'm just cutting off a bit of the really low sub and then I've got this delay. The delay's got a filter on it, so it's not delaying the real subs and it's not delaying the real bright highs because that high note, we don't want it to ring out for a long time. If I turn the filter off, you'll notice that the one, the single note doesn't have as much emphasis because the delays are also kind of doing the same thing. Then I've just got a bit of LFO tool doing some side chain. This one's got quite a bit of reverb um, being sent, but you'll notice here that I cut off the lows of the reverb. So this is just adding reverb onto the harmonics, and this is really important for that big bright hit. Now baseline two is a 808 kick drum, which I've which I've distorted with the overdrive here. Now this is like a really short plucky riff. Because the 808 is a synthesized kick drum, it's tu you can tune it to a note. It's hitting at C. So that way we're able to play notes within the scale. So that really works to create some kind of groove in the track. Because the notes are like subby and percussive, it creates some kind of contrast against the main synth bass as well. So it's really, really cool. Um, this one is definitely the, one of the more interesting um, bass lines of Hot Sense 82. Really great stuff this one. So as I said before, all of the samples and the project, the full project file is available on my Patreon. Link in the description. So if you want to go and support me, grab that and yeah, enjoy. All right, so I hope you got something from that. I really like Hotson Sandy 2 stuff, so it was really interesting for me to dive in and kind of get under the hood, see what makes those tracks tick. So if you want to know more about Hotson Sandy 2 slash Nidip and Sound style production techniques, then check out this video I did about some other production techniques in this style. All right, so that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.